Is the ECG app going to diagnose your heart attack? Is the emergency notification going to get an ambulance to your place? And is the watch going to get you to the hospital on time and save your life? Well, let's watch the video and see. In this video, I'm going to explain five medical features on the Galaxy Watch 4 to help you make a purchase decision. I'm going to look at fall detection, ECG cardiac monitoring, blood pressure, oxygen sensor, and sleep assessment. Let's have a look at this. Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. I'm going to give you a physician's opinion on the Galaxy Watch 4. A little bit different twist. I'm going to look at five health features evaluated from a physician's point of view. A little bit of a twist here. I'm going to talk about what the feature is, how does it work, and what's my medical point of view as a physician who has practiced for the past 40 years looking after folks like yourself. So I want to give you some information that might affect your purchase decision on the Galaxy Watch 4. So let's have a look at this. Now you know the routine. If you like the video, please click the like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. It really does help us. Now, if you're considering purchasing this watch because of fall detection, hold on. Please watch this video. I've made a whole video just on Galaxy Watch for fall detection. I'm going to put it in the link below in the description. Please watch the video if you're considering purchasing the watch for fall detection. Now, what is fall detection? Well, fall detection has two parts. There's the part of falling, and then there's the notification for someone to come and help you after you've fallen. So how does a watch know that you've fallen? Well, of course, there is the act of falling. Whether you fall, you stumble, or hurt yourself, there's some sort of fall involved. And this is analyzed with what we call an accelerometer. This is a small device, it's a chip, uh, in your watch that determines your fall. There's software in your watch that can tell when you've fallen and there is an algorithm there that determines how the fall has occurred and that it is a serious fall and that you may need help. So after you've fallen there is emergency notification and this occurs through your phone, your cellular phone. So your watch is linked to your cell phone through Bluetooth. And after you've fallen, then the second part is emergency notification for help. Now in the Galaxy Watch 4, there are two ways that the emergency notification can be activated. It can be activated manually by hitting the home key three times, or the software will detect if you've fallen. Now your emergency contacts can be set up in two groups. One is to send an emergency message to whoever you decide. And the second is to make an SOS call to either 911 or, or whoever you decide that would be an emergency responder. So you have two, 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 two people are going to get, two individuals or two people are going to get the emergency notification. Now I have some various serious concerns about fall detection on watches. And I've documented those in my video that I've asked you to watch. So please, if you are considering the Galaxy Watch 4 for fall detection, watch my video that is in the link below. Now, most of the information about fall detection comes from the Apple Watch, who has been doing this for a number of years. The information is mostly anecdotal, people writing in saying, it saved my life. But if you're selling 100 million watches a year, we would expect that. So does the technology really work? Well, we don't know. The other problem with the Galaxy Watch 4 is the battery. The battery must be charged on a daily basis. My experience with my Galaxy Watch 4 is that the battery is down by about 70% at the end of the day, and it requires a minimum of an hour to an hour and a half for charging. The Apple Watch Series 7 and the Fitbit Sense 
both have fast charging. The Galaxy Watch 4 has slow charging, which means for the hour and a half that it's off your wrist charging, you have no protection. Also, you have to remember to put the watch back on. But I guess if you have a fall and the software doesn't pick that up, you can always manually push the home button to get emergency notification. You just push it, is it once? Is it twice? Or do we push it three times? Just a minute, I'll have to look up in the manual and remember that. Hold on, if you're up at night, you've had a tragic fall, you've broken your hip, you're in terrible pain, and the software doesn't pick up the fall, are you going to remember that it's three taps on the home button to get help to manually set this up? You see where I'm going with this? I think you have to be very selective on the person you're going to use this technology with. There are much simpler alternatives, and let's have a look at that. The Amazon Echo devices can be used for fall detection, as well as Google's Nest. I want you to look at ADT's system. They have a pendant that you can wear either around your neck or on your wrist, just like a watch. Push the button and help will come. This works through your ADT alarm system and is much simpler than the watch technology. Think about this if you're planning to purchase a watch for fall detection. Now, I feel that the ECG app out of all the five we're going to talk today about is the most important. I've made a video called Your Heart and Your Watch specifically to talk to you about this. I'm going to put the link down below. If you're interested in the Cardiac app, please watch the video. Now the ECG app really detects atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a condition that's common over the age of 60 and is a major cause of stroke. So this is a condition that people often don't know they have and we want to diagnose this and get them on treatment to prevent stroke. The Apple Watch, the Fitbit Sense, and the Galaxy Watch 4 all have pretty much exactly the same app. It works the same and detects atrial fibrillation, the details of which I'm outlining in the attached video. Now it's important to note that the ECG app must be approved in each country the watch is sold, similar to the FDA regulations. Now the Apple Watch has had the ECG app for many years. In all the countries Apple sells the watch, it has been approved. When the Fitbit Sense came out, it took four months before it was approved in the United States, eight months in Canada, and it still hasn't been approved a year and a half later in Australia or India, which is a big market. The Galaxy 4 watch has been approved in the United States for the blood pressure and ECG feature, but not in Canada or many other countries. So if you are watching this and you're from another country other than the United States, you may want to hold off on purchasing the watch until it is approved. The Galaxy 4 watch takes your blood pressure. Oh, that's so cool. Yes, out of the big three, it is the only one that takes your blood pressure. Should we be excited about this? It's very interesting technology on how this works, and I plan on doing a video about it. But it is FDA approved. There is valid data to support the taking of your blood pressure with a watch. So the results are accurate and reproducible. Do I think you should run out and buy a $300 watch to take your blood pressure? Well, I don't. I think it's interesting if it gets patients' enthusiasm up and they want to talk about their blood pressure, I think it's great. But is there any advantage in taking it on a watch versus the standard arm machine that costs only about $50? I don't think so. But certainly if it promotes interest and gets patients enthusiastic about their blood pressure, I'm all for it. But remember, it's not approved in many countries yet. So before you purchase the watch, you may want to check and see if it is approved yet in your country. Yes, the Galaxy Watch 4 has an oxygen sensor. We now can measure the amount of oxygen in your blood. 
Now this often is referred to as pulse oximetry, and this has been around for about 40 years. These are often devices that you put over your fingertip. It works by the color difference between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Recently they were able to make this into a sensor that went on the back of your watch. And now we can detect with the Galaxy Watch 4 the amount of oxygen in your blood. You should note that a pulse oximeter is available on Amazon for around $14. You don't have to spend $300 on a Galaxy 4 watch. This is an example of one I found on Amazon for $13.95 and if you have Prime it's free shipping. Now I have mixed feelings about oxygen sensors on watches. Let me give you an example. I'm working in the garden on Sunday afternoon. I'm hot and sweaty and I push the button on my watch and it tells me my oxygen is 50. I'm feeling fine. If you were in my intensive care unit and I measured the oxygen in your blood and it was 50, I would putting, be putting an endotracheal tube down in your throat and putting you on a respirator because you would be in a very serious health problems. So what does 50 on a watch when I'm feeling fine in the garden mean? Well, it means that the watch is flopping around on my wrist and not giving me an accurate reading, as you will see in the diagram on this slide. This is a friend of mine who had a watch but couldn't keep it too tight on her wrist because it caused some neuropathy in her hand. Can you imagine what the sensor is going to read on a wrist like that? So the readings are prone to error and you have to be careful with positioning the watch on your wrist. And again, what to do with the medical information. Now I think this is one of the situations where it could be valuable if you consult your healthcare provider. It may be with all the fires in California this year, you may, if you have COPD, you may be coughing more and maybe this can be used as one of the tools to decide when you might want to use your rescue inhalers. So this could all be part of a health management program that you could work out with your healthcare provider. I'm very concerned that when we start to use medical information, we get subject to fraud and we're starting to see, yes, you're not going to believe it, but the old fraud that's been around for 80 or more years, oxygen pills are coming back on Amazon. Also, you're seeing massage therapy uh, devices to help improve your oxygen levels in your body. As my mother used to say, a fool and their money are soon parted. So be very careful with what you do with the results of this oxygen sensor. The Galaxy 4 watch assesses your sleep. Now this is a big topic and I've made a specific video on this titled Sleep Track with a Watch, Which One is Best? I've put the link in the description below. If you're interested in getting a watch to assess your sleep, please watch that video. On full disclosure, I purchased out of my own retired money the Fitbit Sense and the Galaxy Watch 4. I wore them both to bed for a week and collected the data. I described my results in the video and I think you'll find it very interesting. Now the ability to measure sleep is done with a medical device called a polysomnogram, PSG. And if you look over on the left side, you'll see an individual with all sorts of little stickies on his face, head, and chest. We're actually measuring his brainwave activity. And as a result of that, we can detect how much deep sleep, how much REM, all the different phases of sleep, how many cycles, and what happens at night. So how does your watch measure all that information because it's not putting little stickies all over your head. Well, it does it with its own sensors. It measures your respiratory rate, your heart rate, the heart rate variability, movement, and temperature. And based on those sensors, it guesses what your brainwave activity is going to be. 
In other words, it's called an algorithm. And you know the Fitbit Sense and the Galaxy Watch 4 each have their own algorithm. Now what's, what is, is the algorithm measuring? Well, they won't tell us. It's actually a secret. So how well does the watch measure brainwave activity using those features? Well, that's an interesting question, isn't it? So I wore a watch on each wrist and went to bed seven nights. So I measured the total amount of sleep I had each night, and then I looked at how much deep sleep, REM, and all the different cycles there were each night and compared the two watches. So what did I find? Well, let's look at the total amount of sleep I got. Well, it was usually right. If I felt like I got a lousy night's sleep, yeah, it usually told me I got a lousy night's sleep. The amount of hours of sleep varied greatly between the two watches up to two hours. Ooh, that's interesting. And then there was the assessment of the different phases of sleep, the REM sleep, the deep sleep, the sleep cycles that we talked about, and there was no correlation whatsoever. We had completely different results. You wouldn't even thought it was the same person with one watch on one arm and one watch on the other. So which one's right? I suspect if I had yet a third and fourth watch, it would all be different again. And there's no correlation to that EEG. Remember the one that had all the stickies over the head that's measuring your brain wave. So what are they measuring how accurate it is? Well, I think there's a lot of hocus pocus here. So what's my opinion? I think if it promotes interest in your sleep patterns, that's great. I think the data is highly questionable and certainly doesn't correlate with the two watches I tested. And maybe sleep patterns measured by a watch are a little bit fictional. I think if it promotes interest in sleep, that's great. Uh, the, a lot of these watches want you to purchase further software to analyze your sleep. And as a result of all the analysis, you're going to come up with the six tips from the Mayo Clinic that are free. And I'm going to give them to you on how to get a better sleep. There they are. You can see that. So you can save your money by buying a watch and doing the assessment because at the end of the day, this is what you're going to come up with. The purpose of this video is to provide you with information on the medical features of the Galaxy 4 watch. Hopefully this will guide you in your purchase decision. I enjoy my Galaxy 4 watch and every day I get a new beep that leads me to a new feature and a new adventure. It's becoming a good friend and I miss it when I forget to put it on. Well, it's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Now you remember, if you like this video, please like it. And if you wanna see more, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much. Until we meet again, have a great day.